The real-time visualization, particularly accurate volumetric measurements um, on an ongoing basis. I'm, uh, there would be lots of applications. The one I'm thinking of immediately would be echocardiography, yes. um, where, where, where one application could be um, ongoing measurement of um, cardiac uh, volume size looking at um, as an indication of total blood volume. So basically my question is how long does it take you to do these images and do you think that you'll be able to do them uh, real time one day if you can't now? It's almost real time now. It depends on the size of the data but again all, all the example we created uh, were, were uh, derived on a single PC with uh, a commodity graphics card, the same kind of graphics card that your kids play video game with. So it's a, it's a relative low cost approach. But if you have really high resolution volume data, um, then we can build a small cluster, say we put uh, four PC together, and then we can handle it also interactively. I don't want to say uh, real time because it's I would say highly interactively because it really depends on the, 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 the quality of the image you require to see because it will, we can always make the picture look better by doing more, com uh, more computation. So we already have the technology and uh, even a couple of years ago we have comparable technology and I've been talking to some people here but then we didn't really uh, no follow-up, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess we all were to too busy. And as I say, we, we've done all this like hobby, so it's not real long-term effort. So that's unfortunate, but I, I feel today would be, uh, as I say, an excellent chance to talk to people who really can benefit from such technology and we can see what we can do from here. Other questions? Uh, followed the uh, same question about the volume segmentation. Actually, I'm, uh, I'm in Professor Sam Cherry's lab. We are doing the medical imaging. Uh, Sometimes we have uh, multiple modality images, so we try to combine them together. Uh, could you let me know how it would be easy for you? We, we work on that before. It's, 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 it's more difficult because uh, you essentially every position you have multiple value and how you represent that. It's, it's, it's a certainly a re challenging research problem. And we, we had some solution, but I was not completely happy with those solution. But this is an ongoing research problem. Um, but as, as I say, we, we do have certain way to, to visualize uh, data from different modality uh, together in, in a single visualization. And we, we, we're doing this all the time for, for scientific engineering application, like data from, um, from scientific simulation uh, usually come with a dozen or even hundreds of variable chemical species. And scientists want to visualize the interaction among different variables. So this is a similar problem. The, the, uh, the medical data often uh, could be more challenging because the different modality, you know, the, the data come with different resolution, different quality, and we have to also deal with that. So we have some experience, but you know, there's more work to do. Last question here. This is for Betsy and Dr. Moore. Uh, can you objectively measure the, uh, how good the people learn using the simulators? And I'm thinking on maybe doing clinical studies on education of uh, physicians or nurses about uh, different procedures using these simulators. How objectively can, can it be measured, the progress? You've illustrated a, a good problem that we're facing. And I think in, in simul there's really, this is, uh, relatively new in, edu in medical education. It's, uh, uh, simulation has been applied to the aviation industry and military for many years. But 
there's really uh, no outcome studies and outcomes data, and we, 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 we intuitively feel that this is good and people are better, and, uh, and, but, we, but, but that they're, the, they're the kinds of studies that we need to know, look at some certain endpoints to see that we, we have actually uh, improved the quality of care that's provided uh, using this uh, process. I feel that, the, that, that probably this may not happen. The aviation industry moved forward very closely to simulation, and then, and then you know, we, we all feel safer in airplanes these days, but again, nothing's been done to show that the actual process is, has, in, has improved safety. But, but, uh, but you do raise a good question. We're very challenged. We, we, so we basically, I think how we score people is very important. How we assess their, their, uh, their performance is important. Uh, but we mostly, uh, uh, we mostly run videotape and we let, we let events unfold and then we use those tapes not for evaluation so much as to, to uh, review and, and recap the experiences and, and with leading questions for, uh, of the students about how they felt they went and how things went and what they might have done differently. And so, and those tapes are not kept in fact. We actually eliminate them so they get out of the way of, uh, of any future progress. We don't want the students to feel that they're being assessed on uh, and being taped on their performance, but we do want them to go away with uh, certain learning objectives from the experience and we think that's a much more important and powerful way to do it. If I could add to it, I, that sort of opens up the question. We appear to have very sophisticated teaching tools compared to actually flight simulators, which if you know anything about United Flight Simulator in Denver, um, that it's far, far more sophisticated than anything that we might have. So we are very interested in some of the um, presentations that you're doing uh, compared, compared to what's out there uh, as potential. Um, we're very primitive and we are very anxious to uh, move to the next phase. I might add also, just to take that in a different direction very quickly, I mean, I was very excited to hear about the AI issue. We, we, we use actors and obviously we can't, we can't express the whole diversity of, of our population here in California. We do try to do a nice job when we use uh, Spanish speaking folks and different things like that that we, we might be reflective of, uh, of uh, issues in, in, in cultural and language issues, but you know, having an opportunity for uh, not to be able to use actors but to actually use some sort of AI interface with, with, our, with, our, uh, with our trainers and tactile signal would be absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, adjourn the panel, but certainly there's uh, fodder for good uh, conversation for the break. Uh, let's take a five minute.